Uh, welcome to lesson 2.05. So given an equation or graph, uh, we're going to determine whether or not a function is differentiable and or continuous by using the definition of di differentiability. Um, so this is actually something that we talked a little bit about yesterday and kind of gave you a preview to. And so we'll formalize that today and also learn about a couple of results that come from uh, our definition of differentiability. Okay, so here's um, a problem for you to take a look at, and hopefully, using this example, you'll actually be able to construct what it means to be differentiable slash not differentiable. So go ahead and copy this down, answer these questions to the best of your knowledge if you need to go back and review some concepts to help firm, uh, confirm your decision, uh, go ahead and do so. Let's take this um, one step at a time. So I'm going to take a look at the first question. What is the slope of the function to the left of 0? So I'm actually just sort of going to split my function down the middle and take a look at everything to the left, and then I'll consider everything to the right. And since we have a straight line here, we can just make a quick slope triangle, look at the change in y over the change in x. So if I take a look at the change in y here, notice I go from a y value of 1 down to a y value of 0. So that's going to be a change of negative 1. And if I go from negative 1 to 0, that's a change of positive 1. So what we can say is the slope to the left of 0 is going to be negative 1. To the left of 0, the slope of the function to the left of 0 we'll say, I'm just going to mark it up here. You've probably done a nicer job. I'm just going to mark it there. Negative 1. And to the right of 0, we can do the exact same thing. Let's just create a slope triangle from the origin to this point, 1, 1. See if the rise is 1, the run is also 1. And so the slope uh, to the right of 0 is going to be positive 1. So now the question is, based on these results, what would you say about the derivative of your function f at x equals 0? In other words, what is f prime of 0? So if you haven't already, go ahead and pause again and, and think about it. What would you say is the slope of your function right at 0? So if you thought about this, there's a couple of different ways you could help understand what's happening here. One way would be to actually graph the derivative and if you were to graph the derivative, well, what you'd notice is, look, to the left of 0, everything to the left of 0, the slope is negative 1. Okay, Everywhere to the left of 0, it's negative 1. And everywhere to the right of 0, it's positive 1. So that would be the graph of my derivative, f prime. And we can see that there looks to be some issue here. Right? What would I say the slope is right at 0? If I look at the graph of my derivative, it seems like right up until the very last second, it's negative 1. But right past 0, it's positive 1. So there's this jump. Right, This appears to be you know, what looks similar to a jump discontinuity. So in fact, we can't define the derivative at 0. It's impossible for us to say what exactly it is. And this gets back to how we defined limits in the first place. Remember that a two-sided limit only exists if it's approaching the same value from the left and from the right. Well, remember, the derivative is just a limit. And so, in fact, if you wanted to actually write out, what, what is the statement that, that you would use to algebraically find the derivative right at zero? Well, let's actually write out that definition, and that will help us see it a little more clearly. So, remember, this is how we calculate the derivative at any point, right? limit as h approaches 0 of f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 over h. Well, remember, we think of this as being the average rate of change or the slope of the secant line. In other words, we're taking this point, f of 0. And what we're doing is we are using um, other, another point, f of 0 plus h. And as h approaches 0, right, this point's going to get closer and closer to f of 0, so it's creeping in. And as we look at that limit, that's going to tell us the instantaneous rate of change at this point that we're honing in on. 
But notice that this is saying, if we're creeping in from the right, this is saying that h is approaching 0 from the positive side, right? That h will be very, very small positive values, and as it gets closer and closer to 0, we're getting closer to this point. But it's a limit, right? So for the two-sided limit to exist, we'd have to also look as, at what happens as h approaches 0 from the negative side. In other words, just think about this. If h were a negative 1, right, this would be f of negative 1. In other words, we'd be starting out here. And as h got closer to 0, we'd be creeping in this way. And we know that this limit is going to give us the slope of you know, the, the path that we're taking. And we'll eventually creep into this exact point and find the instantaneous rate of change. The problem is, is that if we took the one-sided limits, right, if we took the limit as h approaches 0 from the left, and we compared it to the limit as h approaches 0 from the right, what we'd be getting is two different values, right? We know the slope here is positive 1, but we know the slope here is negative 1. And so we'd actually end up with that this limit does not exist. And this limit represents the derivative at this point. So what we're actually saying is that f prime of 0 does not exist. Okay. And so now let's go ahead and formalize this. Hopefully this made a little bit of sense. And we'll actually look at a bunch of different examples um, and kind of classify the different types of situations where a function would not be differentiable. Here's the definition of differentiability at a point. Differentiability just means, does your function have a derivative? So if your function has a derivative at a certain point, we say it's differentiable at that point. And that just means, does uh, the function have a slope at that exact point, an instantaneous rate of change? And if so, obviously, then you can find it. So in order for a function f to be differentiable at a point, x equals a, in other words, to have a derivative, it must be. And there are two criteria, and you never want to forget these. The first is, it must be continuous at x equals a. Right? It must be a smooth curve at x equals a. We can't have any jump discontinuities or point discontinuities. And that should be pretty self-explanatory. And second, and I'm going to read this interpretation first, and the slope from the left must equal the slope from the right. What this means, as we saw in the example, is that as we approach from the left side towards my point, a, and as I approach from the right side, the slope must be the same, which means the derivative as I approach from the left must be equal to the derivative as I approach from the right. And so you'll notice there's a slightly different notation. We've seen this with limits before. But remember, the derivative is just a limit, right? That's how we calculate it. And so what we're saying here is that the left-hand derivative as you approach A and the right-hand derivative must be equal. Okay. And so we can write this out using the limit definition, I'm going to do that in a second, in a couple of different ways. So I'm actually going to write a couple and um, I'll sort of explain what each one means. Depends on which um, definition you're most comfortable with. Okay, and so you can see I've written them um, out, one using the standard definition and the other using a um, different definition um, of the derivative at a point. And so, uh, as we discussed previously, right, the left-hand derivative is going to be the limit as I approach 0 from the left-hand side. Right? So if you have your point f of a, right, this point is creeping in from the left, and so we're taking the limit as you approach, as h approaches 0 from the left. And that's got to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 from the right, which would mean this point is a little bit to the right of this point. And so you can also say the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x minus f of a must be equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And this is just... And so now we have a way of saying whether or not a derivative exists at a point, right? If we have a function and you say, hey, what about at this point? You can say to yourself, okay, well, I know a derivative, in other words, a slope has to exist. There's a, a certain slope that this function has at this point by checking. Is it continuous at that point? And does the slope from the left equal the slope from the right? And you can actually compute this algebraically by looking at the two-sided limits. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of this. But for the most part, you should be able to just look and see, does the slope from the left equal the slope from the right? 
And as we saw in our discovery problem, in some circumstances, it's going to be really pretty easy to decide, oh, that's not the case. So now let's take a look at some uh, examples of situations where the derivative does not exist. So we can um, build a little library of situations where things will be what's called non-differentiable. So now that we have a definition of differentiability, you know, what it means to have a derivative at a certain point, we can now think about what happens if you know, one of those two conditions is not satisfied, what sort of points will we come up with, um, and so then we can commit to memory the types of points that are not going to have a derivative. So if we see a point like this, we can say for sure, you know what, there's not going to be a derivative and here's why. So you're going to want to commit these to memory. And if you want to follow along, I'm on page 111. So the first is what's called a corner. And we saw a corner in the opening, right? This is the, uh, the function f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Absolute value function. And here, we want to just name which of the two conditions is not met here. Well, is it continuous? Yes, it's approaching the same value, right? The limit as we approach from the left, as we approach from the right, of the function f is they're both approaching zero. So it's continuous. But what about the slope? Well, the, the slope here is negative one, and the slope here is positive one. And so it's the derivatives that do not, uh, do not equal each other. And so condition two is the one that is not satisfied here. All right, looking at uh, number two, this is what's called a cusp point. And again, we're going to have the same kind of situation here. So is it continuous? Well, yes, it's continuous, right? The function, as we're approaching from the left, is getting closer to zero. And as we approach from the right, is also getting closer to zero. But what about the derivatives? Well, notice that this, if you really were to zoom in and look at it closely, this appears to be dropping straight down. And actually, if we computed the derivative as you approach from the left, you'd be seeing that it is approaching negative infinity. It's almost perfectly vertical downwards. But as you approach from the right, well, this is approaching perfectly straight upwards, right? And we're moving from left to right. And so this would be positive infinity. The slope would be positive infinity as I approach this cusp point from the right. And so here, once again, the derivatives do not exist. The slope from the left is negative infinity, and the slope as we approach from the right would be positive infinity. The next one is where we have a vertical tangent. And so if you look at the point 0, 0 here, and if you were to take the tangent um, to the curve f at this point, what would happen? Well, you would see that right now at this point, this the curve is moving straight up and down. And so you would get what's called a vertical tangent. Okay, so what's the derivative? Well, if you have a perfectly vertical line, as we saw in this previous example, right, as you're approaching a perfectly vertical line, that means that your derivative is going to be approaching infinity. And so as we can see, as we get closer from the left and closer from the right, the derivative is approaching infinity. And this is a little bit of a problem because um, you can't really explain what infinity is. You just have a concept of it. And so here we're unable to actually say um, what the derivative at this exact point is. And so we have a non-differentiable point wherever. I guess you can't really see that that well. You have a non-differentiable point at any point where there's a vertical tangent, meaning that the um, slopes as you approach from the left or from the right are approaching positive or negative infinity. Last but not least, we have a situation where there's a discontinuity. So here there's a jump discontinuity. And in a second or two, we're actually going to have a theorem that says if a function is differentiable at a point, then it's also continuous, which means if it's not continuous, then it's not differentiable. And so if it's not continuous, meaning there's a discontinuity, there's going to be no way for us to actually say what the derivative is. right? It wouldn't make sense for you to show up and say, hey, I think I know what the slope is at this point, x equals 0. Well, no, you don't. right? It just makes literally no visual sense. Um, and you can see there's actually a little example, if you look at page 111, um, where they compute the left-hand derivative and the right-hand derivative. And if you compute the left-hand derivative, you run into an interesting problem 
because the function is defined at zero up here at one, and so if you um, if you take the left hand derivative, you're going to end up with uh, at infinity, and that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So um, at discontinuity, obviously the function fails to be continuous, and so this fails um, for number one. Okay. All right, so those are the four types of non-differentiable points. You uh, want to remember those, um, have those ingrained in your memory, uh, because there will certainly be situations where you want to be able to pick them out and immediately say, this is a non-differentiable point. And so here's the theorem that uh, I was referencing, and it comes out of what we've just been talking about. It should make sense. Just think about this. If you know your function is differentiable at a point, wouldn't it make sense to say that it also has to be continuous? And the answer is yes. And so what we can say here is that differentiability implies continuity. So if we say something implies something else, A implies B, then what we're saying is if you have A, then you also have B. Right? So like saying um, if uh, the temperature is below 70 degrees, then Mr. C will wear a jacket. So anytime the temperature is below 70 degrees, I'm wearing a jacket. Um, and so here's the, the way that we say it. If a function f has a derivative at x equals a, so this is the first condition, if it's differentiable at x equals a, it has a derivative, then f is also continuous at x equals a. So if you happen to find out that the function is, uh, has a derivative at, say, the point 3, then you also know that the function f is continuous at that point 3. And this can actually be very helpful because uh, if you, for example, are trying to figure out if it's, um, you know, is it differentiable, is it continuous, well, you only have to look for differentiability because if it's differentiable, then it's also going to be continuous. Uh, you can actually prove this. So um, proof is something that you'll get into in college, and it's very, very um, challenging but also very rewarding. Um, and so what you could do is you could start with the definition of um, you know, the derivative at x equals a, and you could work to show that f is also going to be continuous. So you could look back at the definition of continuity, remember what that is, and starting with just, you know, the definition of derivative, you could work to show that uh, the definition of continuity is satisfied as well. Uh, the proof is actually in page one, on page 115, and if you want to take a look at it and work through it um, and come by, we can, we can talk about it. It's pretty simple, and uh, you should be able to, to make some headway with it. So now let's go ahead and, and take a look at some problems uh, and apply some of the uh, different things that we've learned about differentiability and also continuity. All right, here are the questions for you to go ahead and complete. Um, obviously, if you don't have the book, make sure you copy down uh, the, the questions and uh, write out and explain your answers. One through four in the book, uh, then numbers five and six are numbers five and seven on page 116, and again on page 116, numbers 12, 15, and 16. All right, see you guys tomorrow.